Well, hello, and welcome to a worship service here with Central Church here in the heart of Phoenix, Arizona. Uh, my name is Pastor Doug Handlong, and today I'm here in the Pioneer Chapel uh, here uh, by myself um, in this kind of time in this season that we're, we are doing the very best we can with, with what we have, uh, each of us under stay put during this 2020 uh, pandemic. Uh, we're doing the very best we can, and so um, grateful to the team that is helping to, to bring worship uh, together, uh, recording uh, different segments and pieces, edited, posted, shared on via Facebook and YouTube. I cannot thank you, these folks enough for the work that they're doing, uh, the learning that, that we've each had to do. I extend a great big thanks uh, to them. If you find this worship experience to be uplifting, I want to uh, in, invite you to share it. Uh, and you can do so by sharing that Facebook Live that you're perhaps watching. You can share the YouTube link. Or you can even forward that e-blast that you received uh, and, um, and invite somebody to, to click on that in the e-blast. Uh, you know, it's a great way to just expand the number of touches. In this time of isolation where many are finding themselves sort of stir crazy and, and uh, lonely and, and uh, isolated, you just might be that word of blessing and uplifting to them if you, you share uh, this worship uh, with them. And so uh, thank you in advance uh, for that. I want to also just extend my thanks to you for uh, your, your commitment to Central Church. You have made contributions and many of you are uh, each week uh, you're, you're sending in your regular contributions uh, via mail some of you have taken on uh, giving online i cannot thank you enough uh, this matters this matters and so we are we are grateful to each and every one uh, of you well friends I'm, I'm glad that you're 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 with us that we can be together that we can worship although separate we're together united in spirit um, Lift up your hearts as we gather together and worship this day. Love in your heart And the world will be 
Let us pray. Loving, living God, we thank you for the gift of this day. Uh, not perfect, not ideal, but we are here. It's another day where we find ourselves perhaps isolated or alone, wondering, waiting, watching to see what is next, what will happen. God, we pray that although we are separate geographically, we would be united by your spirit of love, your spirit of grace, your spirit of hope that lives. Unite us, uplift us. Remind us, O oh God, that although we don't know what tomorrow holds, we are grateful that we know who holds tomorrow. Lord, move in our worship and in our time. In Jesus' name, amen. I know there's a light that goes by the front door. Don't forget the key under the mat. When childhood stars shine, always stay humble and kind. Go to church cause your mama said to you Visit grandpa every chance that you can It won't be a waste of time Always stay humble and kind What the door said please said thank you Don't steal, don't cheat, no lie No, you got mountains to climb When the dreams you're dreaming come to you When the work you put in is realized Let yourself feel the pride Always stay humble and kind Don't expect a free ride from no one Don't hold a grudge or a chip of his wife Bitterness keeps you Always stay humble and kind Know the difference between sleeping with someone Or sleeping with someone in love I love you ain't no pick up a line Always stay humble and kind Hold the door, say please, say thank you Don't stay the dreams you're dreaming come to you when the work you put in is realized let yourself feel the pride but always stay humble and kind oh yeah oh Shut off the AC, roll the windows down Let that summer sun shine Always stay humble and kind Don't take for granted this love that life gives you When you get where you're going, don't forget, turn back around Help the next one in line Always stay humble and Hi. Uh, let's pray. God, um, speak through me, speak a word, uh, a word that each of us needs to hear, to uplift us, to encourage us, to build us up. Uh, God, uh, we're listening. Uh, we're yours. Amen. So as uh, most of you probably know that uh, today is actually my first day or my last day to serve as, uh, as your pastor. I uh, am going on a spiritual renewal leave effective uh, tomorrow. 
for three months. It is a gift that I uh, am, am grateful to, to, uh, to receive, uh, both from the church and from the denomination. I have, for the last 20 years, I have served full-time in ministry and not had the opportunity to do this. I found myself with a level of fatigue that has um, left my level of energy in a place where I've not been able to offer my best to Central Church. Uh, for that, I'm sorry, um, but I'm grateful for this opportunity uh, going forward, and it has been a blessing to serve as your pastor. Uh, when a pastor leaves a church it is, uh, it's, and goes to a next chapter, uh, we have this distinct opportunity to, to, to offer some final words. Uh, granted, I've never been in a situation like this one, uh, doing it over video, finding ourselves in the midst of a, a global pandemic in this year 2020 and a, under a stay-put order. It is strange to say the least. I want to thank you for the well wishes that I've received from you, cards and notes. I, I am grateful. I appreciate your encouragement and your uh, affirmation. And uh, from the bottom of my heart, you are loved. And I appreciate each and every one of you. As I've contemplated my final words for you today, I've considered the circumstances that are not typical. The time we're living in is, is, is so different than in any of our memory I regret not having to uh, ever asked my my grandparents who who were children uh, at the time of of the uh, of the 1918 uh, pandemic, uh, or even my great grandparents who 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 I knew. Oh, oh, to have that conversation now would be what would be just a a tremendous gift. But it wasn't on my radar. Um, I but it would have been a great conversation for her for us uh, to have. Events like these cause us to pause and reflect about what really matters. We've been limited about where we can go, what we can do, how many people we can be with. Uh, we are having talks about the economy reopening. Uh, and with that, it, it may look very, very different. One commentator suggested that your server may, uh, in a restaurant, may be wearing a mask and may be wearing gloves. Until an immunization is found for this COVID-19, uh, we may all be asked to be wearing masks into public and to, to continue to just be cautious in our and social distancing uh, for the near future. The world is changing even when things are normal, but they have been just seem rapidly changing uh, day in and day out. And that leaves us wondering about so many hows, what's, when's, and who's. So I want to leave you with three simple rules. Three simple rules that I believe apply now and will apply once we get through all of this. Three simple rules. And I, and I, I, I took this from a book written by retired Bishop Reuben Job. And it's, that's the title of the book. It's Three Simple Rules, A Wesleyan Way of Living. You can get it very cheap. Uh, online uh, and and delivered. If you're an electronic reader, it's even cheaper. It's a quick read. Um, but these three simple rules are a Wesleyan way of living that give us a baseline for what it means uh, to, to, to just go about business in a world that is changing each and every day. Now, I, I, are you ready? Now, these three simple rules, here they are. I'm going to give them to you real quick. Wash your hands, stay at home, and don't touch your face. No, I'm kidding. Those aren't the three simple rules, although those rules may be with us and you may be hanging on to those for a long time. The first one, uh, a simple rule is this, to do no harm. Do no harm. Seems simple enough, doesn't it? But in fact, it may be one of the most challenging of the three simple rules. Bishop Job contends that this simple rule is mo maybe most challenging because it requires the most discipline. It requires one to be intentional about the words that we say and the words that we do not say. It requires us to, to be purposeful in terms of what we do and what we choose not to do. I, I mean, we all know that it's easier to just sometimes be flip, to be sarcastic, to be cute, to, be, uh, to, to poke. But to, be, to do no harm requires us to pause, to breathe, to think and to be careful with what 
we choose to do and say. To do no harm means to lay down our arms, to lay down our weapons. We live in a a day and an age where we, so many are committed to ideologies and ideologies cause us to draw lines in the sand that divide us along politics and, and along our social circles and they define us. And to do no harm is to lay aside those ideologies, to lay down our arms, to be non-combative with those who are different than we are. Well, now some of you are saying, lay down my ideologies. Well, I have firm beliefs and firm commitments, whether they're, it's a, a freedom of speech or a, a freedom of, of religion or freedom, what, many different ideologies that we hold on to. Job suggests that that our ideologies become secondary to following the way of Christ. Following the way of Christ. To do no harm and to lay aside our ideologies means I'm going to follow the way of Christ. Do no harm is to be cautious not only about the unkind things we might say, but it also means to guard ourselves against uh, the, the, the being silent in the face of evil and oppression and nastiness. See, to do no harm uh, it might mean speaking up. Speaking up. No, that's not okay. That's not right. You need to cut that out. See, we see things happening around us or, or something maybe be said or done. And for us to not speak up is harmful. So to do no harm is not just to watch what we say, but to make sure we speak up when the time comes. The second of the three simple rules is this, is to do good. Now, on the surface, some would say, oh, well, do no harm and do good. They just, they sound like they're, they're just really one of the same. To, to do good and to do no harm uh, are very much alike, but yet they're different. If to do no harm means to be, is this in, there's, there's a certain amount of restraint involved. To do good means a certain amount of assertion that is required. To put forth love, to put forth grace, to do put forth kindness, to put forth forgiveness, to do good. To do good means to not just do good to and for and with people who look like us, act like us, dress like us, worship like us, speak like us. It means to do good to all people, all living beings. When Jesus was asked, uh, you know, there was this commandment, it was, you know, love my, your, your neighbor. Well, the response to Jesus was, well, then who's my neighbor? And Jesus proceeded to tell a story about who his neighbor was. And of course, it's that's the story we know called the Good Samaritan. And if we dive into that, 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 that story about the Good Samaritan, quickly it, it, it begins to show us this, the barriers are broken down. There are no, no barriers for doing good. Uh, 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 the, the, the social barriers, religious barriers, economic barriers, all of those broken down to do kindness in love, reaching out and doing good for others despite our differences. It's a universal call upon our lives. But this doing good isn't just about just like, oh, I'm going to just, you know, do something nice or, or help somebody in just a simple sort of way. The Jesus good that we're called to, the living this way of Jesus, is this, this sense of a radical good. To do a radical sort of good. We, we listen to the words of Jesus and we hear these, 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 these things like, you know, it's not just turn the other cheek, but it's bless those who persecute you. It's pray for your enemies. No, not just pray for your enemies. It's love your enemies. It's not just uh, someone asks you for your, uh, your, your shirt. You give them their clo- your cloak as well. It is a radical goodness that we are called to. Radical. 
The third simple rule that Reuben Job suggests is, to, is that there's do no harm, do good. And the third is to stay in love with God. As a simple rule, no matter what's happening around you in life, if things are, you know, they're going crazy and life is changing and, and it feels like we're getting different rules or guidelines or expectations uh, that, are, that are, it, friends, stay in love with God. This may pr- seem particularly challenging right now as we find ourselves isolated and divided and separate, each of us in our own, be it today, our living room or on our own patio or, or on our own kitchen table. There we are. The psalmist writes this, Seek the Lord and seek His presence continually. Seek His presence continually. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, named what he called ordinances. Ordinances that, that were these, these components or elements that helps people stay in a vital faith and vital relationship with God. And he named them this way. He says, worshiping God, the Lord's Supper, whether it's private and or with family, prayer, searching the scriptures, Bible study, fasting as a way of, of, of engaging the holy prayer. All of these things are, are elements of seeking God's presence continually. Now, the truth is this, is that for each of us, these different elements engage us in very different ways. Every single one of us is, is, is wired differently. Some would say, uh, I, I encounter the holy, I encounter God uh, so fully and completely at the Lord's Supper. Others would say, oh, I can get lost in prayer. Maybe you know people who can get lost in prayer. Not just go to prayer group and and talk about prayers for a a bit and share about the prayers of the community and then prayer for a a short time. No, I'm talking about people who can pray and be in prayer for 30, 45 minutes or an hour. My attention span is challenged to, to do that. I've known people who have read the Bible cover to cover and they do that regularly, whether it's annually or every other year. They do that and that keeps them grounded and engaged in the holy for others that they would say that it's it's a communion with the saints now for you right now this has been particularly challenging you miss your friends you miss your family friends be all the more intentional make a phone call grab that piece of technology whatever it is facetime google hangout duo zoom send an email, handwrite a note. We've received more handwritten uh, notes and I've seen more coming and going than I have in a long time. And there's a beautiful element of that, that this engagement and connecting with others, it is a great gift. Stay in love with God by engaging these spiritual activities. Stay in love with God so we can be in tune to God's guiding presence in our lives. Again, I'm going to commend that book to you, Three Simple Rules, uh, and um, by Reuben Job. Uh, you won't be sorry. Uh, friends, I want to just close in this prayer, uh, and this is from uh, Reuben Job, uh, a, a simple prayer. Um, and so if you'll join me. Loving God, come and make your home in our hearts this day. Dwell within us all the days long and save us from error, foolish and foolish ways. Teach us today to do no harm, to do good, and assist us so that we may stay in loving relationship with you and our neighbor. Help us today to be an answer to another's prayer so that we may be one of your signs of hope in the world you love. Amen. We are entering into a, a, a time of prayer. And, uh, you know, if we were together, we have our prayer book that uh, people write their prayers in and we share them in our worship service. Uh, we also have prayers that come to us via the Connect 
friends, I want to encourage you to uh, any emails that, you know, send us an email with any special prayer requests. Uh, we know that there, that we're all facing a challenging time. I think it's fair to say we could lift up prayers for those who feel isolated and alone. We can lift up prayers for those who uh, are are awaiting medical treatment, who are kind of kind of held to the side because the doctor is saying, you know what, we we we're just not going to act on that right now because you know we're just bringing fewer people to the hospital. We can pray for our doctors, for our nurses. Uh, one uh, nurse uh, did share with me, a medical professional, that they, they, in fact, locally were still waiting to have adequate PPE, personal protective gear. Uh, and so um, that is a reality in our own community. Prayers for all those facing cancer and other illnesses. Prayers for those who are battling worry and fear and their anxieties are up just an extra level today because of our circumstance. So Lord, we lift all these prayers. We lift these prayers for those, our loved ones near and dear, for those in our community, for first responders, for those doctors and nurses that are uh, in the trenches, for those uh, who are isolated and alone and fearful and worried. We're thankful for those who have stepped up, who are embodying goodness and kindness and grace, who are uh, helping uh, the least of these, those who've stepped up to, to deliver food and those who've stepped up to do errands and those who've stepped up. God, we are grateful for your the manifestation of your love in others. God, our prayers are many, more than we can name uh, this day, and we are grateful that you're at work in ways that we cannot see or know or may not understand. God, uh, we uh, entrust our, our lives to you. Give us wisdom. Guide us by your Spirit uh, that we would, in fact, do no harm, that we would be rise up to do good in radical ways, and that we would uh, be stirred by your Spirit to stay in love with you. Lord, hear our prayers, spoken and unspoken, and hear us now as we offer this prayer in song.
together in our words of assurance. I am a child of God, deserving love and respect. God has called me to change the world. Amen.